hello students welcome to a lesson through the virtual training center of the brihan mumbai mahanagar palika my name is shraddha teacher and in this lockdown period since we are not able to go to school children we will be doing many lessons here online through the virtual class so come on let's proceed to our lesson for today hello students let me welcome you to a lesson in civics through the virtual training center of the municipal corporation of greater mumbai my name is ashradha teacher and this is a lesson under the work from home sessions now children we have been doing many lessons in history and in english together here this will be the first lesson that we will do in civics so now what is civics you have been learning many points about uh, civics and many topics on civics in standard 6th also isn't it so civics is something to do with the way we live in society so today's lesson will be the first lesson in your civics portion that is introduction to our constitution so in this lesson we are going to talk about how india as a country became a free and we will talk a little bit about the british rule and the number of states in our country at that particular time and how the leaders of those times felt that there should be a system or there should be a set of rules in place in order to run this vast country okay so today's lesson will be about how our country is run or how our country is administered okay how the administration and how the rules regulations etc for the government is and why is it necessary why should we have rules and regulations for the government and all these things we will learn today under the lesson introduction to our constitution now children we all have studied previously in younger classes that is when we were in the 5th standard 6th standard etc that all of us follow certain rules in society isn't it we all have a set of regulations that is for example if you move out on the road there are rules that you follow regarding traffic isn't it at home also there are certain rules the time you go to sleep the amount of time that you are supposed to study so there are many different rules that we follow okay in school as well as outside at home on the road in a public place so what are rules the rules are statements which say that you can do certain things and you cannot do certain other things so if you are able to do something and that is against not against the rule then it is okay but if you do something and it is against the rule then you cannot do that all right now just like you have rules for the classroom rules for the school Okay, rules for the family. Certain times there are rules that we follow in a family also. In the same way, rules are essential for running the country also. Do you think it is possible to run a such a big nation without any rules? So in your home also, your mummy sets rules, isn't it? That whatever is served on your plate, you have to finish eating it, or you cannot watch TV for more than two hours. so there are so many rules that are there in the house in the same way there are certain rules which are there for running the country now the rules which your mummy makes at home they are not written isn't it she tells you that these are the rules but the rules that are made for running the country are written down and those rules are called as the constitution of india those rules are written under a book which is called as the constitution all right so a constitution is what a constitution is a written document i told you na your mummy tells you things orally she doesn't write down the rules for you but the rules for running the country are written down so that is called as the constitution and what is the constitution this is a very simple and easy definition of the constitution so a constitution is a written document that creates a government and describes how that government is to work and run 
so it tells the government like your mummy tells you in school my your teacher tells you in school and your mummy tells you at home the constitution tells the government how it is supposed to function it lists the powers that the government has okay and also the responsibilities of the government so what is it it is nothing just you should connect the constitution with the rules that you have in school and the rules that you have at home but this is written and it is also on a larger scale because our country is a very large country isn't it so once again let us read the definition of a constitution so a constitution is a written document that creates a government and describes how that government is to work and run it lists the powers the government has and also its responsibilities okay so the government does not only have the powers it also has got a lot of responsibilities and all the rules which are necessary for running our country india is mentioned under the constitution of india so see this is how the constitution of india or the book on the constitution of india looks like can you see now we will learn more about the constitution we will learn what is there in this book and what does it tell us and what was the procedure in order to make the constitution all right so in the constitution we have provisions provision means uh, laws regarding what we have laws regarding various things we have laws regarding a uh, citizenship that is who should become a citizen who should not become a citizen of our country okay rights of the citizen after you become a citizen of a country what rights do you have in this country okay and also about the various laws which are made by the country about elections which are conducted in the country about the various states in the country and how these states function what are the powers which the states have what is the power which the central government has so all these things we have rules regarding all these things in the uh, constitution and these are called as the provisions in the constitution now children is it so that only in india we have this kind of a constitution it is not so there are constitutions adopted by all countries almost around the world so see this is a copy of the constitution of the united states okay or america as we call it this is a copy of the constitution of japan now children there is a lot of difference between the constitution of india and the constitution of the united states or the constitution of japan why because we have different backgrounds you can see each country is unique every country has its own problems every country has its own culture we have our own history and tradition that is why the constitution of different countries can also be different but then what every country tries to do every country tries to create a constitution which is best for the development of its citizens okay now let us try and see why this constitution is necessary is it so compulsory that we should have this kind of a constitution let us try and see so we need a constitution to govern a country properly to govern a country means to run a country okay so if you want to govern or if you want to run a country properly then you need to have a constitution it also defines the nature of the political system of a country now in our country children we have a democracy people it is a government of the people for the people and by the people so that is our system political system we have a democratic system so another country might have another system all right so the constitution of a country defines the nature of the political system of that particular country sometimes there are so many issues in our uh, surroundings okay are some things which are good for us some things which are bad for us which may cause harm to us okay so the constitution tries to guard us against all these things which might be harmful for us for our growth and for our development as citizens now what happens sometimes the government 
has to function at various levels. So in our country, the government functions on three levels, the executive, the legislature and the judiciary. Now all these organs of the government, organs means parts of the government or you can say departments of the government, if they go against the benefit of the people or if they try to act against the, you can say, welfare of the people, then the constitution will punish them. So they cannot act against the constitution. So what is the importance of constitution? Basically, constitution is for giving power to the government so that it can work and also restrict the government or stop the government in case it tries to uh, conduct some kind of behavior which is not good for the citizens of that particular country. All right. So this is about the need for a constitution. So constitution is necessary so that the government can function properly. Constitution also defines the nature of the political system in a country. It helps us to guard against something which is not good for the citizens of the country. And also it uh, allows or it compels the organs of the government to function within the constitution. So all these points are children very very important. And remember, all this means what? All this means that in one way or the other, what is the necessity of the constitution? Constitution is necessary for the proper administration of the country. So administration of the country here means making laws for the people in the country, defending boundaries of the country. Now you must be knowing if you watch TV, or if you, if you read the newspaper once in a while or you must be hearing your parents discussing there is a lot of uh, trouble happening at the, our border with China and India has done so many, taken so many steps in order to see that China doesn't enter our boundary okay so we are defending our boundary alright so defending our boundary to eradicate poverty from the society that is to see to it that the condition of the people become better all right. Administration also means providing employment for the people, giving people in this country jobs, okay? giving people in this country education, giving people in this country proper health services and also developing the commerce and the industry in our country. So a government see it has got so many duties to do, isn't it? It has to make laws, it has to defend the boundaries, it has to uh, prevent or you can say it has to lessen the poverty in the country it has to provide employment education health benefits to the people living in the country okay and it also has to see that india develops as far as commerce and industry are concerned so what does the constitution do it provides or help to the government it provides guidelines to the government in order to do all these now let us try to go back a little bit into the background and let us try and see how this constitution was made. Okay, we will talk a little bit into history now about the British Raj and how the British ruled India and how the constitution was made. So you can see this is a very important uh, page where a lot of things about the Indian constitution is available for you, for your understanding. So the Constituent Assembly was the group that went on to make the Constitution. How was it done? It was done in 11 sessions, that is they met 11 times. They discussed for 165 days and how many members were there? There were 299 members. All right. Now the Indian constitution is the longest written constitution in the world. There are many countries which have their own constitutions but India has got the distinction of having the longest written constitution in the world. It provides six fundamental rights to its citizens and there is a preamble also which tells you about what is there in the constitution. And one very important point is we have Dr. Baba Sahib Ambedkar who is called as the architect of the Indian constitution because he had a lion's share in framing and in implementing this constitution. So this is about 
the constitution of our country let us go back and see what is the meaning of the constituent assembly so i told you the constituent assembly is this particular group of people who came together in order to write this constitution so they must they have not written it directly okay they must have studied so many things for example dr baba saheb ambedkar he studied the constitutions of different countries and he also thought about how should india's constitution be written and along with him there were 298 other members who helped him in this work so totally there were 299 members in the constituent assembly of our country now you know children that india was governed by the britishers okay and india became independent on the 15th of august 1947 before that india was divided into provinces so the british ruled india and the british divided us into provinces so we have the bombay province we have the bengal province and the madras province and the names of all these places have changed bombay is now mumbai madras is now chennai okay and bengal is now just a part of the uh, eastern part of india. otherwise you can see here bengal means almost the entire northern belt was considered as bengal you will also see that there were 565 princely states when india became free so all these orange patches that you can see here all these were the princely states okay how many princely states were here? there there were 565 princely states in india when the partition happened after india became free all these people were brought together and these princely states were governed by the princes so you can see rajkumar as we call them they were governed by these princes they were governed by the nawabs okay so our leaders of those times they brought all these people together and they made india as one nation and then we had all these members working tirelessly under the constituent assembly of india in order to bring this book into existence which is called as the constitution and now you can see here this person dr rajendra prasad he was the president of the constituent assembly all right and you have dr baba saheb ambedkar who was the chairman of the constituent assembly and i already told you that he had a very very uh, you can say major share and he had studied in depth the constitution of various nations and he had thought a lot about the situation of india and what kind of rules should be set for governing india okay and the constant draft of the constitution was prepared by him draft means a rough copy of the constitution was prepared by him he also uh, had a lot of contribution towards making the constitution that is why he is also called as the architect of the indian constitution so that was about the important people who were involved so the important few important people we will look at we cannot look at the names of all the 299 members so we talked about rajendra prasad ji who was uh, the president and we have dr baba saheb ambedkar who was the chairperson along with that we had so many other people who worked tirelessly day and night for developing the constitution we had pandit jawaharlal nehru sardar vallabhbhai patel maulana azad saroj i do and many such stalwart leaders who went on and who helped in framing and in preparing this great book called as the constitution of our country so the making of the constitution is looked at now the india as a country adopted the constitution on the 26th of november 1949 and we started commencing that is we started living according to the constitution on 26th of january 1950 so november 26th is called as the constitution day and 26 january children like we all know is called as the republic day of india all right it was on this day that we started working or we started functioning or we started adopting the provisions which are given in the constitution so this was a lesson based on the introduction to the constitution of our country we talked about what is the constitution why it is needed and how all countries have constitutions but they are all different based on the special nature of that country we also talked about the background to how indian constitution came into existence the 
constituent assembly, the various dates, the various people, etc. involved in the making of the constitution of this country. So that was all for today children from the virtual training center of the Brihan Mumbai Mahanagar Palika. Till we meet. So children, wasn't that a wonderful video and did you enjoy watching it? So if you want to watch more such videos in future, then please like this video and also subscribe to our channel, the MCGM portal for education and also hit the bell button so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video here. Thank you so much for now. Let's meet again soon.